it's so great to meet you. Um, I was actually catching up yesterday, so I watched about two episodes. And I'm a huge Same. Ted fan. Like, I think we're both kind of in our 20s. Um, I'm older than you, yeah. but I have to ask, like, what was your initial reaction when you found out that you got the role? I mean, well, I've, I've told this story before. It was just, you know, I was sort of sitting in negotiations. Nothing was confirmed yet. And I was just sitting in my apartment uh, just alone playing video games. It was like 11 o'clock Eastern. It was, it was nighttime. And I get a, a call from an unknown LA number on my phone. And I'm like, you know, what? I'm, I normally don't pick these up. I'm in the middle of negotiations. I probably should, you know, just see who it is. So I pick up the phone. And I'm like, hi, uh, who is this? And they go, oh, am I, am I speaking to Max? And I get like super put off and offended for some reason. I'm like, uh, yeah, who is this? And he goes, uh, it's, it's, uh, Seth. Uh, McFarland. I, I just wanted to know if you wanted to come do Ted with us. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I I, I hopped right up, um, just like pacing around the apartment excitedly, some like more polite back and forth. And then my, uh, my friend was crashing with me at the time. He got back like immediately after that. And we just jumped up and down and partied and I called everybody I knew. I was just so hyped. So fun. That's the type of late night call you want to get. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much every time. I always have my phone on do not disturb, but I mean, I feel like I should like change that now just in case I get a lucky break too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, normally I just send that shit straight to voicemail, but but something told me to pick up in that moment. It, it was in the air. Um, So in this series, you're going kind of back to high school and like, that's like my dream. Like, I still feel like it was just yesterday, but it's like over 10 years now. So what was that entire experience like? And what was it like for you kind of going back into high school, but having... A teddy bear that you can talk to yeah I mean honestly wasn't like super different I was also an awkward 16 year old who smoked weed with his friends all the time like not it wasn't it wasn't too much of a shift for me to 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 jump into John's shoes and kind of relive a bunch of that stuff a lot of the firsts went down in a similar way uh you know first prom first time smoking weed all that stuff yeah, um, I would say I'm, I was just as like stubborn and idiotic as John is, just with d different like blind spots for sure. I, I also have a way of digging my heels in about something that I'm absolutely wrong about. And then would you say that you ever had like a toy or an imaginary friend when you were younger that you could possibly see come to life? I didn't have an imaginary friend, but I did have... I remember we moved into like the, the home that I grew up in when I was I was about to turn three and I didn't like it at all. And I was very upset. I was afraid. I was like, ah, oh, this place sucks. Um, you know, I miss I miss the old house. And uh, then my parents got me this like, you know, in my head, he's still this like giant stuffed animal because he was bigger than I was at the time. But again, I was three years old. So he's he's probably actually just about this big. Uh, but in my head, he was this giant, like, black stuffed horse, like, horse stuffed animal uh, that I named Blakey, and uh, that calmed me down, because I had I had a friend who was with us, and I got to snuggle with him every, every night, and that was, that was very sweet. Well, I had this seagull from Australia, and it was called Seagull, and that seagull is still somewhere at my home in England, but I absolutely loved it, and it was, like, the best toy ever. It always made me feel calm. Yeah, there's something about it. Like when you're little, you just want the, the huggable thing. Even now, like, I mean, I replace it. Obviously, I have a kid and I have a, a, a wiener dog. But I feel like when we grow older, and that's why I love Ted, it reminds us that no matter what age we are, we're always going to kind of need that comfort. And even that though- That comfort that's support, yeah. Yeah, we need that. Um, that's why I love about it. And I'm so happy that it's a series now. Going to it being a series, do you think- Oh, we're hoping that we can get this in a season two. I mean, I'm hoping, right? Uh, I think there was a degree of the studio wanting flexibility when they decided to call it an event series, uh, you know, just sort of give them a way out either way, depending on how things go. I think it, it seems like people really want one. And I would I would jump at the chance to go back and, and do more. It was such a blast to shoot. Okay, so we're going to put that in the air, and I'm going to ask for it, too. So hopefully they take yeah, it over. <laughs> now, um, obviously, Lena Mark Wahlberg plays the character in the films. 
was there any things that you wanted to take from his character that you wanted to bring to yours? And then how did you want to change it as well? I mean, the stuff, the stuff that I sort of took from him in the films, I didn't really need to take from the films. Like it's all sort of right there in the writing. It's, it's written by the same people. It's the same guy. He's just 16 years old. Um, in fact, I wanted to be too, I wanted to be careful not to do too much of like a Mark Wahlberg impression because I think there's there's a world in which it comes off that I'm trying to be like Mark Wahlberg and not trying to be John Bennett. Um, so that's that's where a lot of my effort went into actually of just like trying to find this guy rather than trying to learn how to how to walk and talk exactly like Mark does. Exactly, and everybody needs to remember it's the character, it's not that. And I think you did yes. a good job. Um, now, have you been getting a lot? Have you been reading social media? Have you been seeing fans' reactions to the series? And what has your response been to that? Yeah, it's been kind of wild. Like I knew, I knew people were gonna like it, right? It's I knew just from shooting it and from having seen the little bit that I had seen before it came out. I knew it was funny and I knew people were going to find it funny and they were going to like it. I didn't know just how much people were going to like it. I mean, it, it set that Peacock record. It was number one in Canada a few days ago. People are, you know, reaching out to me in my DMS, you know, with kudos and saying stuff like I've been going through like a dark time and this is helping me get through it, which is like crazy. Um, uh, it's, it's been wild and wonderful and kind of surreal to see people's reaction to it, especially because it's been so long since we finished shooting the thing. We finished shooting it uh, tail end of 2022. So it's been over a year since we finished before it came out. So it's it's almost like a different person was was in that. So it's it's kind of surreal. Yeah, I think we don't realize like when we see a TV show, there's been so much work and so much time that's gone up to it that we never realize like, hey, this was filmed a while ago. And obviously we went through a lot of things last year with the strike and all of the stuff. So yeah. it's like full circle moment seeing it um, on the screen. Now, I've really always like, wanted to know what it's like playing a part where the actual bear isn't there. Like, what was it like? Was Seth in costume? Was you know, were you just playing with the voice? Like, what was this whole experience like? Because on screen, obviously, it looks amazing, but I know it's really hard for right. you. It was really weird and confusing for about the first two weeks because there's nothing there. It's completely empty space. There's no, you know, I think the classic example is like a tennis ball on a stick. Would have killed for a tennis ball on a stick. That would have been dope. Uh, but no, whenever Ted's on camera, there's there's nothing actually in the frame. You know, I ruined my fair share of takes in the first couple of weeks because I'd be looking at where the bear is supposed to be and I'd say my line and then Seth would be over here and he would say the bear's line and I'd just turn and deliver my next line to Seth. Uh, so it was, you know, it was it was distressing for the first couple of weeks, but after a little bit of time, you start being able to almost hallucinate him on command. It feels sort of crazy. Yeah, I feel like you have to tap into the thing that when you were a kid, because I see my four-year-old just like talking to herself and her toys, and I'm like she's creating a whole scene in her room right now. And I feel like when you tap Imagine into that, I'm like, oh my god, this is insane. But I feel like when you grow older, it just like disappears, and it's like, oh my god, like I can't. It does. You have to. You have to work to keep it. Weirdly, yeah, that's that's sort of what my whole profession is about. <laughs> oh, I think I'm in the wrong profession. Um, but. I have to ask, so you've been in the game for, you know, since you've been a young age and yeah. from like what I've read and all my researchers, they're an amazing human being. And how do you stay grounded, like being in this industry for so long? I mean, some of the actors and actresses that I love growing up, like, I feel like a lot of them have like fell off the limelight or the paths have not always been positive. But what's your advice for like our future young creators? I mean... To a certain extent, I think I owe it to not really blowing up that much when I was when I was younger. Like it's not. I also think I owe it to being a, a guy because there was not so much pressure and scrutiny on how I behaved and looked and dressed every second of every day, which I can't even imagine facing that level of pressure. But I also had just tremendous people around me the whole way through. Like my parents were both actors. So they were good at helping me sort of like navigate the industry with weird, creepy people around every corner. Like they made sure that 
that my interactions with people were were positive. They really went a long way of keeping me in terms of keeping me grounded. You know, I had I've always had really good friends. Um, you know, I was able to go to school mostly as normal when I wasn't working. A lot of that was was definitely helpful. Yeah, I think keeping normalcy and all of and just having that support system is like the key for all of this. Um, Very much. And now, has being a part of the series kind of taught you anything? Any lessons learned from it? Lessons learned. Um, yeah, this is like the biggest thing that I've been at the forefront of, sort of ever uh, in my career, and. I don't even really mean that in terms of just like press or being a lead or anything like that. I mean that in terms of like hours worked on set and days in a row worked on set, like more than I've ever done before, um, especially with a series that, that can go very long. You know, we were shooting, I was shooting like five days a week, mostly, you know, 14, 15 hour days for four months and uh, stamina preservation. Uh, is is a lesson that I learned big time on this project. You can't treat it like a sprint. It is a marathon. And, you know, by the end, I was I was just exhausted and I didn't want to do anything for, for months. And I didn't. I just stayed in. Yeah, that's good. As you need to do that for your mental health, because that's a long time. Oh, like, yeah. All those hours, weeks in advance, like weekends, you probably can't even really like relax. Like that's a lot. Um, yeah. Now, I have just one last ask from you. I know you're probably super busy or just want to chill. It's Friday. What's a yeah. message to your fans and everybody who loves Ted and every, all the work that you've done? Message to everybody. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Keep on the lookout because I'm trying to do even more this year. Thank you. I'm going to give you a follow on social media from my personal account. I'm going to edit and share this everywhere. And I really appreciate you for taking out the time to speak with me today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me.